ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Ljubljana Talks. And we are again here live at IMAX 2024. It's the second day of the trade show today, and we start this day with a conversation with a very special guest, Flavie de Well. I hope you got, I got it right. Uh, from right. City DNA, and it is so great that you took the time to talk to us. And uh, let me start with a question. How would you describe City DNA in four words? Well, thank you for welcoming me and thank you for the exercise. Um, it was not easy, but I took the four, first word that came into my mind. And the first one is a community. It's about the community of those 120 members that make our alliance. The second one is knowledge, because we are here to share knowledge, what is working and what is not working, you know, within our convention bureaus and our DMOs. Third one is destinations, because we are all about destinations. And last but not least, Europe, because we are a European organization. Right. Uh, you recently organized uh, a big event in European Parliament. The name of the event was Positive Change. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, this EU dialogue, as, as we call it, was organized a month ago. And one of our members, I mean, the, the Visit Brussels uh, Convention Bureau, um, knocked on our door and said, guys, we need you because Belgium is, Belgium is you know, leading the EU presidency for these six months and we, we, we have um, you know, the opportunity to do an event about tourism, but we want to focus on the meeting industry because we feel it's lacking of you know, recognition and not only recognition, but also um, you know, support from the EU. So let's join forces, let's, uh, you know, organize this event, this full day with all the different topics that, you know, affect our industry and let's have one EU representative per session to initiate this dialogue or to continue. And so this is what we did. And I, I have to say it exceeded our expectations, um, you know, also in you know, in the attention we could get, uh, you know, from the EU and also in the number of participants. So it's just the beginning. And now we are working on a um, list of, let's say, recommendations, takeaways, what we want, you know, uh, to continue our dialogue with the European Union. It was perfect timing before the election and, and so on. But let me ask you something uh, which is not actually always clear. Are we part of tourism or, or uh, I heard that you talked about it, or are we part of economy or part of creative industries? What would you say? I think this question is, you know, lasting for like, I don't know, at least 10, 20 years. But I would say, of course, I mean, meeting industry as, I mean, Again, this is another discussion. Should we call ourselves the meeting industry? Should we call ourselves the business event sector? Mm -hmm. And we really realized during that event how fragmented our industry is. So that's one thing. So we need to speak with one voice, who we are and then what we do. Are we part of tourism? Yes and no. <laughs> I mean, we use the uh, services, the facilities of tourism, but we are a little bit different. So I think we should also put ourselves in the shoes of the EU like, like for a few minutes and say, okay, can we maybe use the existing tools of the EU and you know, improve them in a way that the meeting industry, the business even sector, whatever we call it, is recognized. Um, for example, I mean, the EU, they have made some efforts. They have produced this tourism transition pathway. I know it's called tourism, but why don't we take that existing document and that was one of the conversations we had during the event, why don't we take that and suggest some improvements mm -hmm. and really like widen the scope of this document that is highlighting like 70 different actions, why don't we add two, three from, you know, our sector? Mm -hmm. um, and then there is also one other project that is initiated from, from the um, European Union, is the Be Future project, mm -hmm. which is the first meeting industry project uh, where we are involved. So I think we should use both and both are linked. The B Future one is also based on the um, tourism transition pathway. So, I mean, our opinion, our idea will is to take what is existing already and improve it. Sounds logical. Yeah. Sounds logical. 
So, uh, the city DNA has been renamed into city DNA before it was European cities marketing. So the core, in a way, is European. Uh, it still has that core, and if we, uh, we, we we repeated this a couple of times lately, you know, if America innovates and China copies, then Europe regulates. So, in a way, finding a mutual taxonomy on a European level and finding the positions on how to talk to politicians of the largest united market in the world, I believe the city DNA has a unique position to be leading this conversation. And I think this is exactly what you are saying. My question would be, what do you expect or how do you expect to unite and bring together all these different opinionated members within the association to stand behind the same story? That's a very um, good question and very ambitious task. And I think, um, you know, I was surprised how this conversation that was started at the EU dialogue still resonates here at IMAX. And I have spoken to a few journalists who told me, and I was not aware of that, saying thank you for starting this discussion with the EU because before there was almost nothing, let's say. Um, I mean, the business even sector has been active, but not the meeting industry as such. Um, so they said thank you for that. And I did not realize, you know, how this was not explored until now. And I'm also positively surprised how, how this is resonating, you know, uh, through different conversations. Um, at our CVV Cafe, we had at ICA, you know, uh, different uh, global advocacy sessions as well. And I have some meetings with other journalists later on today. So I think the more we talk about it, the more we will, you know, get this um, willingness to, to, to speak into one common language. I mean, that's, that's the thing. And it has to be spread out, you know, all over, all over the world, basically. And I had the opportunity yesterday to discuss with Destination International, and we were also, you know, um, echoing this conversation. So I think maintaining contact um, with each other, talking about it is key. This is, this is such an important message. I mean, after all, we are working, let's say, in the meetings industry and we need to meet and we need to talk. And, um, you know, DI, Destinations International, coming from the US, they have a different, uh, different perspective a lot of times of our industry. How would you define this core idea uh, of city DNA that I think that you think we should be pushing forward? Um, I think, I mean, our core uh, purpose, our core raison d'etre, if I say, is really, you know, make our cities better places to live. Uh, we want to uh, also keep that our community is strong and I mean this is our core reason that we are also truly Europeans so this is what makes us different from you know from any other association um, it's true that we are the tiny European ones and I'm happy to discuss with with more global ones um, but that's how it is and now you know our core European DNA is you know making most of sense now and, and I think we are more and more relevant uh, you know to take on this role not alone because you cannot act alone but together with our friends you know from the industry and also one other association that is key in the landscape is the joint meeting industry council and um, they are global but still they you know they they were one of the four partners, you know, in this EU dialogue together with us. And I also, um, you know, took the opportunity and I was happy to be elected on the board of JMIC. So that also, you know, is connecting all the dots. Uh, so we are fully equipped to, you know, go, um, you know, on this, on, on this pathway. <laughs> yeah. One of the topics coming up on the first place these days is, of course, sustainability, which is, in my opinion, not uh, anymore uh, 
thing to discuss about because from 1st of January this is something we will need to do, there is no doubt. SRS is here, so basically 50,000 companies is already reporting according to that. Uh, but there is another part of it. We talk, I, I heard uh, many times, regenerative industry, impact, uh, legacy, and so on and so on. Do we know what we are talking about? Because in SRS everything is clear. If you measure, you also measure regenerative effects. This is part of the story actually and reporting. So why we use so many words for something which is already uh, in, on European level described well and, and everything is clear. This is a provo provocative question, of course. Yeah. I know. Yeah, when I saw the question, I was like, yeah. okay, well, if we had the magic formula to yeah. measure that, I mean, we would already be, you know, um, showing the EU, okay, this is, this is the impact of our industry and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't have yeah. this magic formula yet. <laughs> um, but uh, so that makes it very difficult for our sector. We've been like, you know, talking how, you know, what is what we are doing and how we advance societies and etc etc mm -hmm. but it's extremely difficult to measure um, and we have I mean different different measurements different approaches that are really relevant but I mean we need a wider formula that is that can be applicable to to any event any congress anything and it's extremely difficult but if we start with the events which are our basic i would say uh product i would say it sounds strange i know but the, what we are producing are events you know so I basically know. we can measure events do you agree with that or not yes and i can agree. precisely we can measure that yes okay. yeah sure I detour a little bit because uh, that, that was something we are talking with many people these days and, and this is coming up. Uh, Jan, you probably agree with that. Legacy, impact uh, yeah. and so on. But let me ask you uh, something. Uh, did we learn something from Corona crisis? Uh, we believe, we all believe that uh, after the Corona crisis, we will get out uh, in a completely different new world. You know, everything will be more sustainable, more responsible towards, I would say, environment, of course, towards participants and st towards society. Are we there or not? Where we are now? We are, <laughs> I think, in a different world than pre-COVID, but not the world we were dreaming of when we were, you know, stuck at home and like trying to, to, to dream of a better world. I think we are more, um, I mean, COVID led us to communicate even more. Uh, I mean, I could see the change, you know, managing our alliance we three board meetings per year now, we went into 10, but more regular, more, you know, structured in a different way. So we have, I think, improved a lot. We have worked on our efficiency. Uh, I think also the personal connection, and we could feel that in our community uh, got stronger because in those difficult times we said, okay, I mean, this is more and more obvious to work together, to rely on each other. So I would say the personal connection in our community got stronger. Um, at the same time, people are more selective in a way, choosing and picking what is more of interest to them. So, I mean, being relevant is the core of our, you know, daily job. Okay, how can we remain um, on the top, uh, you know, for our members? Um, we see some more last minute or so, I mean, registrations, uh, last minute, you know, project, and then you have to jump on, you know, different initiatives, different things. Um, so we see that. So it's, that is keeping us, forcing us to be more agile, even more than ever. Uh, but I like kind of those challenges. They are like, you know, um, we need to, we need to take them on board. So talking about challenges. Um, yesterday we were speaking with Peter Stushek, for, uh, that is the immediate past president of CityDNA. Uh, and some of the challenges she was dealing with were, of course, COVID. You know, the, the association was renamed. It, you know, the, the, the meeting steering groups, uh, the, the steering groups got renamed. There was a lot of changes, different, uh, you know, graphical designs, all that. Um, now, Barbara Jamieson from London and Partners is the new president. What do you see as key challenges for her mandate that are on the table? 
Yeah, I mean, I can only echo what you just said and the achievements that Petra Stusek brought to our organization in those very challenging times. Now we are, of course, more than happy to welcome Barbara on board. And I mean, I, I know her for ages and I'm really glad to work with her. I think, I mean, she has a different profile and I see that as a great opportunity for our association. We want to work more on the meeting industry. We want to do more for our convention bureaus. Uh, we want to do more to leverage our brand um, and to really, you know, go for this advocacy we were just mentioning before. So, um, yeah, we will also develop new partnerships, uh, new media partnerships, um, innovative ones uh, as well. We are also, um, you know, looking at our next conference and how to make it more, more sustainable and etc. So we are cooking a few things. Uh, for you, I cannot reveal them now, but uh, maybe in a few weeks. I need to ask you this. What is the legacy of Petra Stusek uh, as a president? Can you tell us more? You know, uh, Jan mentioned this a little bit, but what do you think about it? About her three mandates as a president of, of um, CTDNA? Yeah, I can see um, a few big achievements, actually. Uh, the first one is the agility that uh, you know we experienced uh, being locked down at home. We said, okay, we cannot stay like that. We cannot stand still. We need to be proactive and we need to, to go and get our members where they are. So we developed this power of communities, communication series, webinars, discussions, whatever, to keep our community alive. And of course, I mean, the response rate from our members was immense because they were, you know, we were all at home and willing to keep in touch and really discuss our challenges. So that's the first one. Second one, uh, Rebranding our association was, um, you know, not an easy task. Mm -hmm. That means, you know, reflecting on where, who you are, what you stand for, what are your core values, and etc. And this was linked to also our new strategy. Uh -huh. So a new brand, a new strategy, and then a few other key projects. One of them is the Vivacity Challenge that we uh, work together with SimpleView. The idea is to follow two different destinations, Helsinki and Torino, in their three years process to, to rebuild their own strategy. So two different cities, different challenges, so what are, how they are working, you know, on a, on a daily basis, how they are structured, what can they improve to be future-proof DMOs and hopefully inspire, you know, others. So these are one of the few achievements I would, uh, I would mention. And last but not least, the um, you know, we have different knowledge groups working on different topics, thematics and projects. And we have also, as part of our strategy, we have restructured them. We have improved the way they share, you know, the knowledge and the content they are working with, with the members. So I think we have also improved our membership experience and the way that our members can get as much as possible from, from our alliance and from the different um, projects, case studies, connections mm -hmm. they have among themselves. Uh, reading some of your documents, I can wrap up this in a simple way actually. You support creativity absolutely, which is necessary for innovations in our industry. Yeah. Like you already mentioned, the project Be Future. Yeah? And of course, from innovation, uh, we can get, get back to the sustainability. We need innovations to be more sustainable. Can you share some other ideas and projects you are, you are working on? Uh, because there is so many things going on. I read just now that yesterday you had an inter interesting session during the IMAX uh, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the other projects is, you know, working in collaboration with other organizations. And uh, one of them is Destination International. Mm -hmm. um, we were, you know, brainstorming on how we could work together. And one of the solution was a kind of overarching topic and accessibility is you know, one of the I mean, uh, topic that we had not explored enough in the past. So, so we had this common interest. So we have been running a survey over the last three months and we were presenting yesterday the preliminary findings also with concrete examples. One was Brussels and the other one Tampa in Florida. Um, and then, yeah, 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 the objective is to really, yeah, like compare, get inspired, um, yeah, it's to be an eye-opener 
uh, first of all, to create awareness of the emergency to really work on this topic, create better experiences for our tourists, whether they come for leisure, for business, but also for the residents, because a city that is more livable, that is more um, tailor-made to um, you know, to any kind of people, we want to, to have open destinations, uh, we want to improve our uh, our destinations as such. And um, yeah, this is really an eye-opener. And also working with local communities, working with associations that are, you know, supporting those disabilities, putting yourself in the shoes of, you know, I don't know, blind people. I know some cities like Vilnius are creating a, like a guided tour for blind people. So that sort of things that can really be inspiring to um, to, to any, any other destinations. So we will present the full result um, at DI annual convention in July and at our conference in Bruges next October. Uh, and the survey is still on. So if you want to, you know, contribute, if you are a destination and if you want to contribute, uh, go to our website. There is a link, and you know, you still have a month or so to uh, to put your you know, experience, whether you're doing good or not. I mean, we don't care. I mean, we want to go measure. To the there you go. There you go. That's that's very important. Yeah, we want to take a picture of what is the situation now. Yeah. And what is very interesting is that 36% of the DMOs have a sustainability strategy, but another 30% are planning to have one. Mm -hmm. So we could easily double in a few years mm -hmm. the number of, you know, accessibility strategies within our destinations, which is... You know, fabulous. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, that I, I think that city DNA is probably the association that has the most data about the destinations, about especially about European destinations. Anything from your collaboration with the um, uh, faculty uh, in uh, Model University, with, uh, with yeah. the Model University from Vienna. Um, to, you know, doing different researches. Uh, I know that we were working on the research about uh, subventions in the meetings industry, which is also another topic that is very relevant. Um, now, the office of CTDNA, uh, I, I think that similar to what we are trying to do in Ljubljana is with a small team, we're trying to do big things. <laughs> and uh, you, I think you're doing an amazing job with your team. Um, so if we now look at the technology and let's say chat GPT or other forms of AI, are you using those and how are they changing the life of an association? Yeah, you're right. I mean, being a small team forces us to prioritize as much as, as possible and every like, you know, here every meeting counts. So we, we prioritize and, and, and we, yeah, of course, sometimes we need to say no, but it's, that's, that's it. Um, ChatGPT, yeah, I think, you know, we were very curious from the beginning to explore that and say, okay, what does that mean for us? Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's of good help to, you know, analyze reports, to make some summaries when we don't have time to go in depth or when we need to, to grab the main substance of something. So yeah, we use that. Uh, social media as well is one of the ways that we use it. Um, and articles, I mean, you have to be careful because, um, you know, that, that is one of the discussion I had with Petra. She said, mm, that article, I could feel it was not your usual tone. So I think we need to be careful that we still maintain our, our core message and that, you know, all those articles made by ChatGPT tend to be the same kind of so we we are not you know using that much for that you know purpose uh, we have to be careful and mm -hmm. um, not to automatize too much and keep keep our human human touch um, we would love to find some you know tools to automatize a few administrative you know uh, procedures like and, and to be quicker on that. We have not found the miracle yet, mm -hmm. but I mean, ChatGPT is, is of great support to, you know, for us take the main substance of some mm -hmm. trends or things like that. So if I ask you high tech or high touch, what would you be, what would you, you answer to me? A simple question, I would say. As long as yeah. it is efficient, yeah. high tech, otherwise high tech, yeah. <laughs> One more question. Uh, you also see the difference between Europe 
Are we still number one in meetings industry in the world? I, I mean, continentally. Are we better than, than uh, uh, organizers in the States? Or, or is this just our idea, Eurocentric view, actually, that we are the number one <laughs> in, our, in this industry? Well, I have to say, I share this Eurocentric view. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking with our friends from the US, um, I can see from that mirror yeah, yeah. how well we can be. Um, in some aspects and of course some other they are more advanced than us like EDI and that sort of stuff. We are more advanced in sustainability and generally speaking um, but I would say we are doing good and we must maintain this you know market share as much as possible and this is also the core uh, you know the main line between all our conversations with the EU and etc cetera, etc cetera, because we need to maintain our sector but in the end it's also the European competitiveness that we need to we need to maintain. This is one of the sectors where we are competitive definitely right? and we are not losing I would say the 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 the, 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 the for, for, for and the, the pace actually so yeah, yeah. Uh, well we are coming closely uh, shortly to the end of our discussion uh, if you want to say anything or add anything to our uh, viewers, feel free. But usually we finish with short, short questions, really short ones. Okay. Uh, my first is actually walking or cycling. Walking. Okay. Can you explain walking. more about it? Yeah, I'm big fan of you know walking and hiking as much as I can. Um, I also uh, you know in my spare time uh, did. Uh, for a few years, uh, you know, this road to Santiago de Compostela. So, like, you know, one year we do 200 kilometers, the other year we do 300, and, you know, step by step we go there, you know, with the family. So, I'm a big fan of walking and hiking. Well, you answered mine because I wanted to say mountains or the sea, but... Um... Both. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I mean, I was born in a place where you have mountain and sea, uh, you know, it's very south of France, yeah. close to the Spanish border. So I need those. But let me say, uh, fire or ice? Ah, fire. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, my last one is not such question, but uh, can you name one of the concerts you want to attend? And it's on your bucket list. Uh, um, yeah, too many. Too but many. But I thought, okay, let's think a bit outside of the box. But one concert where you have this, you know, ninth symphony of Beethoven, uh -huh. because this is a European song, and wow. also because we need to be, you know, in harmony, all of us together, um, you know, singing the same song. So. Super, super, amazing. Thanks for being our guest. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we are coming back at 11 o'clock with another guest. And uh, power to the meetings, as we say. <laughs> Thank you so much.